Hi, in this week's video, we're going to be reviewing this, the Nordic Track S22i. I've been using this bike for a few months now, and I would describe it as more of a grower than a shower. I'll talk to you about the build quality and why I've upgraded a couple of parts on this bike already. I'll talk to you about how I think Nordic Track actually misleads people slightly on their website. There's also something that this bike does better than anything else, any other bike in its class. There are a few bits that aren't quite as good, but I'll also show you how to save some money and get around these as well. Let's get cracking. Let's start with build quality. In my experience over the last few months, it's been really, really good. When it did arrive, it had a knocking from the seat, which I fixed with some grease, and I had to do a factory reset out of the box. But since then, it's been absolutely fine. I would actually say it's slightly better to ride than a Peloton bike, but don't tell anyone I said that. One area the bike really falls down is with this seat. Now, after 350 Peloton rides, I just thought I'd get used to this quite quickly, but it's, it's just the worst <laughs> thing ever. So I replaced this really quickly with a $25 um, seat I found on Amazon, a gel seat, and that solved the problem. This is a bad seat. The next thing is the pedals. Now, if you're in the UK, at the time of filming, you'll get the 2021 bike still. We're kind of a third of the way through 2022. Uh, and it's got these pedals. So you've got a flat side and you've got a cage side. And these are fairly cheap pedals. They're okay, but it's better to be clipped in. So I just swapped these out for some clipping pedals. If you're in the US, since the end of 2021, you're getting the 2022 bike and you'll have a cage one side, an SPD the other, so you don't need to worry about the pedals. They're all good. Because I'm using this bike in my Peloton shoes, my pedals, I've just gone for a look delta on one side, which matches the Peloton pe the shoes, and then SPD on the other for when I change these shoes. The gel seat I'm using is just a lower weight gel bike seat from Amazon. So far, it's been excellent. One thing that really stands out on this bike is a built-in fan. Now, you'll probably have your headphones in, it's quite noisy. So you've got three settings here, this is on the max, and then you've also got auto. Um, but it's just such a nice feature to have this big fan here. Not the quietest, but very, very good. If you're buying the 2022 version of this bike, it has a, a much smaller fan here, so less powerful, I think, but also quieter. Next, I want to talk about the Nordic Track website when you buy these bikes. Have a look at the rating under the first two bikes here. Does it look to you like these bikes have a rating of 4.8 and 4.7 out of 5? It does to me. Let's take a closer look at that. Now, these ratings aren't actually a rating for the bike. They're, rate, they're a rating for the workout on the bikes. Now, what I mean by that is after you complete a workout like this one, um, you're asked to rate the workout at the end. Now, these, these workouts are spectacularly good. So they get really high ratings. But the way that Nordic Track have positioned this rating under the bike, I think it looks like they're trying to make out that the bike is actually getting these ratings, not the workouts. Let me know what you think in the comments, because I'm really genuinely uh, keen to hear what other people's thoughts are on this as well. If you're like me and you do lots of your watching and research on YouTube, you will notice that some YouTubers have a plaque in the background on their videos, don't they? Now, I want a plaque, and if you can help me out if you're not a subscriber by subscribing, that takes me closer to my 100,000 subscribers so I can get one too. Nordic Track have a mixture of class rides and outdoor rides, like this one. Now, the class rides are good, but where they really shine is with these outdoor scenic training rides. The scenery is fantastic, and it's very much you and a coach. So either you'll be leading or the coach will, and they'll be talking you through the workout. As the terrain changes, uh, the auto follow on the bike changes as well. Now, the coach sets the resistance throughout the ride. If it's not right for you, you can adjust it and it will trail the, um, the riders, the coach's resistance if it's too much for you, or if it's not hard enough, you can be ahead of the coach as you're riding along. 
One thing the bike does unbelievably well, and this makes it so immersive, is when you're going up a hill, the bike tilts backwards, and when you're going down a hill, the bike tilts forwards. And the, the resistance is also auto adjusted to make hills harder and uh, declines easier. And this feature is really what makes the Nordic Track S22i stand out like head and shoulders um, against its competitors when you're doing this, this outdoor uh, style workout. These have been by far my favorite workouts because the scenery changes all the time, unlike a studio. With the studio rides, they're a bit like The Walking Dead. I like The Walking Dead, but as time goes on, it's quite hard <laughs> to refresh things or keep things fresh with the same format. Zombie gets axe in head. Uh, studio cyclist makes you rah-rah in the same environment. With these, because the scenery plays such a big part of the workout, I mean, you just never get bored. They're also very honest with these scenic rides as well. Yesterday I was doing a ride around uh, the, the hills in Lake Tahoe and the instructor fell off his bike twice. Now they didn't even make any attempt to edit it out, they just left it in and he carried on. But the second time, it quite clearly taken a shot in the nether regions. And I don't know if this has ever happened to you. He was able to ride it out, but everything he said for about a minute afterwards just sounded very angry. And if you're thinking about buying one of these bikes, when you do, they will ask you to sign up to the iFit subscription. Basically, that is the content that you're seeing here. I would say don't do this because what they'll what the subscription is, it's, it's, it's about 30 a month for a family membership. So that works out 360 for the year. Now, I didn't sign up for this and I bought my iFit subscription from Amazon. Because I'm the main user on this bike, the only user on this bike, I just bought a single person's iFit membership and that was 104 for the year. So a much, much cheaper, over 250 cheaper than if I'd have signed up on the bike when I got it. A family membership also came in at 289 on Amazon with a digital gift card uh, instead of the 360 that you pay if you sign up on the bike. With iFit's off the bike workouts, they're good, but if you want something a little bit better, then I would recommend an annual subscription to Apple Fitness Plus. Now, I'm trying to use a bit of a blurring technique here because it's very hard to show Apple Fitness Plus content because they just give me a copyright strike. However, Apple Fitness Plus, I think, out of Peloton, iFit, and the, most of the others, they have the very best content and if you buy an annual subscription to this, it's only £79 for the year. So in conclusion, I really like this bike. It's a very good bike to use. It's actually very likeable as well. With the incline and decline feature and the auto following these outdoor rides, this is like 80, 90% of its USP. And it really does make for a brilliant experience on the bike. If you do have a problem with your Nordic Track bike though, I would also look at the Trustpilot scores for where you are. People have said that they're not very quick to fix things if they break, but I do think that disgruntled customers perhaps say a lot more than happy customers do. But overall, I recommend this bike. I really like it. Well, I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, as I've mentioned, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.